Hey folks, it's Ben from Explominate, and uh, this is part three of our uh, tutorial series for Remnants of the Precursors. So at the end of the last episode, uh, we were starting to look at the races screen. Now, this is where we deal with any of the AI races that we bump into in the in, in the galaxy around us. And so far, we've, uh, we've met another Alkari-based race called the AVRI. At the moment, we can't actually see anything of theirs at all. If you notice that next to our our galaxy or next to our territory, we all we have is these stars. We've we've not actually been able to see anything other than uh, there was a scout ship that we bumped into from the AVRI. So what we need to do now is get some more information um, about the AVRI because it, it's looking. I, I deduce that they're probably based here, but I'm I'm not certain of this. So we need to find out the races tab or the races screen has four different tabs. It has diplomacy, where we can actually deal with talking to them directly. Uh, we've got intelligence, which is where we can set certain, we can set uh, spending towards spying or uh, espionage, which means that we can actually steal their te uh, technology from them. Um, we can also set sabotage missions too, where you can blow up things like missile bases and damage their factories, that kind of thing. So <clears throat> we're going to do two things now. Uh, firstly, I'm going to have I'm going to talk to them and just see what they see what they've got to say. But first, it's, I think it's important that we we look at the, the Aviari's actual statistics, right? So we've got we can tell where their home world is or what their the name of their home world is, the uh, AVR, the name of their leader, and then this is really important, the character. So um, in in Remnants of the Precursors, the the AI have what's called personalities and objectives. So the first part is the personality and the second part is the objective. So the uh, honorable militarist means uh, honorable leaders will never attack, never attack anybody that they're on good terms with. However, they will react twice as strongly to unprovoked attacks and sabotage. And a militarist seeks to develop new and innovative weapons technology. They will build and maintain a large star fleet at all times. I'm just reading that from the original Masters of Orion um, manual. So the uh, the AI basically get, uh, it rolls these it rolls these character traits kind of randomly, although each race has, I think, three that it, it kind of picks from of each category. So they usually fall within a certain bracket uh, and the, the Alkari tend to uh, tend to be honorable. Um, I think they're honorable, honorable militarists as it uh, as it is right from the start generally. So, and also here underneath we can see uh, the status. So at the moment we've got no diplomatic treaty. Uh, if we have a non-aggression pact or an alliance or we're at war with them, it will it will display that here. Underneath there's a relations meter, which is a graphical representation of a numeric value that's assigned uh, to our our diplomacy rating with them and. It ranges basically from them loving you to them absolutely hating you and being in a kind of feud and at war. Underneath here is something that's kind of new in rep, uh, that's been added to Remnants of the Precursors, which is a diplomatic incident list. So one of the issues with Master of Orion 1, perhaps, was that um, the relations uh, the, the relations score was kind of kept hidden from you. You didn't really know, apart from a kind of, it would tell you whether they're relaxed with you or upset or, you know, um, whether you're whether you're in a feud whatever but now we can actually see each of the incidents and their numeric effect um, so for example here all we can see so far is that we've made first contact and this gives you a, a slight negative modifier to uh, the bonus however we are set to relax and I think that's because we're the same with the same faction race so so that's this is just a basic rundown of the of the race if we go to intelligence in this screen, once we've got some intelligence on them, we'll be able to actually see what technologies they've got, uh, which makes it's really important for your strategic planning because for a start, you'll know whether they're more advanced or less advanced than you, uh, whether they've got something you can steal, whether it's wise to go to war with them because they may have some technology that's going to make them absolutely unbeatable, that kind of thing. So the intelligence screen is uh, really useful as well. I'm going to start here and I'm just going to put some spending. Uh, we're going to throw some billion credits from our from our overall system finances into into making uh, some spies. So what happens is uh, you put spending into into this fund here, and then it gives you a certain amount of time for a spy network to be created. 
Now you don't have you can't you don't just have to put one in. You could have like up to well however many spies you wanted, right? But each time it's twice as expensive. I think I think that's how it works. It get it, it gets double double the previous amount of money required to set up a new network. Uh, so for the start, we're just going to set one spy, um, and we don't want to put too much of our our funding in. We don't need to see them immediately. So I'm going to leave it on six billion credits a year, which, which is going to take about five turns, and this will mean as we get more production over the next few turns it will it will it will reduce as well the spy orders at the moment we're just going to set them to hide that means they're not going to try anything like stealing any any technology they're not going to try uh, to sabotage anything they're just going to hide and send us information about what they've got uh, the military tab will show us any ships that they've got so anything that we, we've actually come across a couple of alkari ships so far there was this scout and um, there was this small armed ship that they had. Now, um, it will give us the information that we've seen so far, although we've, we didn't have any battle scanners on our on our ship, so we can't get a, we weren't able to see what kind of weapons or special devices they had or anything to do with what computers or the armor type or shields. However, we did get to see how fast they were traveling. This is unsurprising. They're only traveling at speed one because of, just like everybody else at the start of the game, they won't have researched any propulsion technologies. Um, so this is fairly unsurprising information, but this is just to show you, um, you can actually come into the military tab. Uh, also once we've, once we've got some information from the intelligence, we'll be able to see how many of each type of ship they've got, which is really useful. Um, I'm going to come back to the status screen once we've, once we've actually got some more information. So firstly, I'm going to talk to the uh, AVRA and see what they can see, what they've got to say. I greet you, Ambassador. The sovereignty is prepared to hear your request, but how far we go to accommodate it remains it to be seen. Okay, so this me this message uh, that you get from them, the the text, it will give you an indication of how they feel about you, and that also changes depending on the uh, the, the personality and objective types that they have. So let's just see what they're saying. I think. Firstly, so we've got some options. We can set some diplomatic options, and the first thing we can do at the start of the game is just to propose a trade treaty. Now, trade. Trade essentially uh, gives both both of the parties um, some credits each turn to represent them trading various goods. Um, this is good for you because it raises the uh, diplomacy rating. It, it raises your relationships basically with the with the target faction. Um, so, and I think that the the maximum amount that you can get is something like twenty five percent of your yearly in, uh, income. So let's go for the highest amount. They should accept it because our relations are quite good. Yeah, we find your offer of fifty billion credits per year to be fair and equitable. Okay. Um, okay. From here, we could also declare war, and there's other diplomatic actions. Okay. So now we um, we've got enough relations that we could propose a non-aggression pact. We don't want to do that right now. So let's just say goodbye to them. So. We've done everything that we can for this turn with regards to the diplomacy. Just going back to where we were with the rest of the game, um, we were sending a scout ship towards this system here to see what was there. Uh, we've got some fighters that are guarding Sato, but now I think is probably a good time for us to build a colony ship. Um, uh, the reason why I say this is because we're almost getting to the point where the amount of factories we've got is going to overtake the, our population's capacity to be able to to control those factories so i think one more turn of building factories and then i'm going to start building a colony ship and colonize this this planet this the planet on the sato really quickly okay so our fighters have now arrived we've got six fighters there it's not a very it's not a lot of ships it's not going to deter a determined colonization effort or a, or an attack by uh, dedicated combat ships however it will be enough to if they sent a, a colony ship unarmed, they would be able to drive it off. So next, what we're going to do... Okay, so we've got 73 population and 144 factories. That, that's enough for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to freeze these. And let's build ourselves a colony ship. So it's going to take six years. That's acceptable at this stage of the game. It would be good to increase our factories first. However, I do think that we need to get this this uh it's so critical that we get this system because this system is our gateway to the rest of the universe especially since we've we've been dealt a very bad hand um, with regards to these uncolonizable planets here um also now 
but we if we just check on the races tab and in intelligence you'll see that uh, it's only three turns now until we get this spy network so let's just let's just go to the next turn uh I'll, the scout ship is still moving towards uh, the this red star here i'm just going to flick the turn on again and okay the alkari have now turned up and they have six sparrowhawk ships and they they don't seem to have any missiles on them otherwise they would have fired so let's let's just uh, retreat these the sovereignty is pleased with how your people present themselves in diplomatic affairs to show you how much we value our relationship we wish to sign a non-aggression pact ensuring that neither of us falls prey to misinterpreting each other's intentions uh now it's a good idea to form non-alliance uh, non-aggression packs because you don't want to be at war and it also starts building your relations together also because these guys are honorable it will it will be a really it will be a real serious thing if we were to break that pact so they would never they would never be friends with us again i think i'm going to say no for the time being and the reason is because it's possible we might have to go through them uh, if we do have to go through them that will be a problem especially if we signed an NAP so let's just say no for the time being and I'm just going to there's not much we can do here yeah I'm just going to leave the I'm going to leave these as they are and I'm just going to keep building this colony ship let me just check the races screen okay so we've got our spy network in there now next uh, the next year after the next turns rolled on we should be able to see where they are here yes they've taken avr this is this is their home world so actually they were closer than i thought so this is their home planet and this is their other the other planet that they have that we can see now if you look in the uh in the the system screen here we can see the population the number of factories that they've got same with this system here uh, otani we need to get this colony ship here pronto, absolutely pronto. So we've got two turns to do it. This might cause a problem for us. Now, actually signing that NAP might be a good idea at this point, because if they send these ships over to, from Aviar to Sato, we're in trouble because they'll, they'll be able to drive us off. And at the moment, there's nothing to stop them from doing that. So, and uh, we can't. I don't really want to stop building the colony ship to build more military ships. That would be a really bad idea. So, hmm. This is why I love this game. This game is so great. It really, it really forces you to make kind of tough choices right through the game. I mean, the the Alkari are quite a good early faction for waging war, if anybody is. And bearing in mind that you don't really want to wage war early because every credit that you or every billion credits that you're spending on uh, ships is billions of credits that you're not spending on your factories and population growth so you you are stunting your overall growth by going to war that can be worth it if it means you're going to take a good colony um, and this is a good uh, AVR is a really good colony um, we do we will want to attack these guys at some point because that that is a good planet and we want it however uh, we we're not going to be able to face them down right now so Let's go to the races screen and just have a look at the intelligence. Okay, so they've started. They've already started their in, uh, their research. You can see that they've got ECM Jammer Mark One and improved terraforming from their from technology in computers and planetology, respectively. So, I think here they're actually quite friendly with us and we start and if you notice the diplomatic uh, incident screen we, we're starting to get a positive bonus from this trade treaty that we've signed just another quick word on the trade treaty i'm going to show you a new screen now this is the colonies tab and all of our all all of your colonies will list here you can check um the ecology view which shows you uh, the type of terrain that they've got and the population uh, the size, any waste that's on there, and any resources. So, if it's a rich planet, or if it's a uh, if it's a mineral poor planet, if there's artifacts on there, that kind of thing, this will all show up. The industry view shows the amount of factories and production, and then the military view shows uh, what the shipyard is building, any shields and any missile bases that are on the uh, on the on this particular colony. Now, at the bottom, 
this uh, screen also doubles up as your sort of economic screen too. So we can see our annual income, which is uh, a function of the trade income and the colony production together. So you'll see at the moment, we're actually losing money from the trade agreement. And this is why I came to this screen because the way that trade works, um, you initially start off at a trade deficit. This means that you, uh, you, you're going to lose money for a few turns and then it adds it adds a little more each turn until you start making the full 50 billion, uh, 50 billion credits that we agreed to or whatever it is that you agreed to with the with the in the diplomatic screen. So uh, you start off losing a bit of money, but eventually you will start making it. Here is the Empire spending um, information display. So, and it tells you each colony pays a percent of its production to support empire spending. So it just shows you how much you're spending on ship maintenance, missile bases, spying, and security. And the empire treasury, now you can start to save money from each colony and put it into a sort of global uh, fund. So you can save, you can reserve some of your taxes each year. So let's say I was to say, say 4%. Uh, into the reserve tax that would add 5.1 billion credits a year into this treasury fund now this is useful because if you ever need to uh, boost a planet's production um, on a temporary basis you can then transfer funds from the treasury and put it back into one of these planets this is particularly useful when you're starting out on a new planet and it doesn't really have much production you can add empire treasury funds to give it a quick boost um, so let's go back to Let's see what we're doing with this game then. Yeah. Yeah, we want this quick. So we've got two years until this ship's until this ship is finished. So I'm just gonna roll the turn on. Yeah, they don't seem to have moved, although they are building ships. You'll notice now that that's those sparrow hawks have eighteen. Uh, they're they're building fighters each turn. I think it might be worth going for this NAP actually. So let's go to the diplomacy screen and to the diplomatic actions, proposed non-aggression pact. If you agree not to send ships to any of our colonies, the every RI people vow not to attack any of your ships. Okay, continue. So now they've now we've signed an NAP and the fact that they're an honorable personality type, they're unlikely to attack us, which which is good because we now we it gives us this time to send this colony ship over to Sato and settle it. It does create some kind of problem, however. It's possible that they may start swallowing up all the planets around us. So we're going to have to expand really quickly now. It's, this is going to be a race against time. Colony ship is made, and it's automatically uh, moving to Endo. So we go back to Altair, and um, I think what we'll do is we're going to go back to building factories. Their populations continue to grow, so we can we can sustain some more factories now. Uh, Endo is still building uh, population and it's also building factories too. It looks like we need to clean up some waste. If you see here where it says size 63, this means that the, the there's been some waste from factories. It starts to build up and um, yeah, we need to we need to clean that up. I just want to check in that colony tab. Ah, I see why that's happened. I, I, I didn't actually want to add anything to this uh, treasury fund yet. It's really not worth us putting anything into the into the reserve the reserve taxes yet so i'm just going to leave that as it is and just just balance these back out again same altair we'll do the same thing i'm just gonna it's more efficient initially to start putting your money into the industrial spending than it is to grow your pops next turn okay so this the colony ship is on its way and we've got scouts uh I'm going to send this scout. Yeah. No, there's nothing we can reach yet. Yeah, we'll just leave that for the time being. <clears throat> Let's go to the next turn. And yeah, we're we're starting to. We've almost got enough that we can we can start building uh, growth. Now I think I'm, it's time to start putting a little bit into into technology because we're lagging behind in tech now, and it's really important that we don't lag behind too far in technology. So let's go to the tech screen. Now, the, the way that the technology uh, research screen is organized is, um, if you remember, there are six different fields of research. We've got computer tech, construction, force fields, planetology, propulsion, and weapons. They're all relatively self-explanatory, but each one has an added bonus, right? So 
and it tells you uh, what these what each one of these can also influence here. So let's look at computer tech. For us, uh, firstly, we've got two factories that we can control per colonist, and it's generally in computer in computers that we have the uh, the ability to upgrade this. Uh, also, it gives you um, an indication of how far your scanner range is. Now, we're actually researching Deep Space Scanner now, so the scanner range is just set to none because we haven't got any scanners yet. Um, and uh, we haven't got any anything that can actually detect anything any further than our initial three light year range at least. So the way that Empire Tech spending works is this. You assign uh, uh, credits from your planetary spending and it translates into research points. Um, now we can balance these research points between the six different fields of technology. Computers, construction, force fields, planetology, propulsion and weapons. And you'll see here that there's a bit of a discrepancy. So 48 billion credits is actually turning into 60 research points. Now that's because it's generally more efficient for you to spread your research out over the over the six fields. Just watch this number as I change it. Let's say that we wanted to focus entirely on computer tech. You'll notice we've now dropped down to 50 RP. So it's almost the same. So we're actually losing research in doing this. So there's a trade-off. Let's say that we, we really, really need what could we really want? Okay, this would be a good tech to rush now. So construction tech and improved industrial tech nine, which basically means that we, we're gonna be paying less for each factory. If we wanted to rush this, uh, we'd actually be getting less overall value for the money that we're putting into research. Um, but this would be worthwhile doing because this, this would come quite quickly. We'd only have to wait about four turns or five turns to unlock this. And this would drastically reduce the uh, amount of money that we're spending on each factory. So this might actually be worth doing at the start. The other one, of course, that will be good will be improved terraforming. However, we've not actually reached the uh, the maximums on our planets yet. So I'm, not, I'm gonna leave that. You will note though, that we only have 98 research points to go. So that might actually be something that we could get in a couple of turns. Okay, I'm going to have a think about this. Yeah, I think it might be worth going for the improved terraforming. We, we can trade this, you see, with someone with the other Alkari race. They do have this and they probably would trade it with us. But um, I think just two turns worth of research, it might actually be worth us worth us getting this straight away. So I'm going to go for that. So let's go to next turn. I'm just going to adjust a little bit more into tech. Ah, okay, so our colony ship has now arrived at Endo. So let's send it straight to Sato. There we go. And we're going to continue with the spending in on the Alkari homeworld into, uh, into the factories. Now, if you look at the tech screen, let's see. What is what's happening now is we've actually hit uh, the the the, thre the threshold where we can start getting breakthroughs. So what happens is each of these each of these technologies they cost a certain amount of research points. Once you've once you've paid for that initial research point. So if we look at Control Baron here, it's two hundred and sixty seven research points. Once we've paid for that with the research points we're pumping in, then we get the opportunity as a percentage chance for a breakthrough each turn. And the more money that you put in each turn, the more, the higher the chance will go. So at the moment, they're, they're basically the game is making a dice roll on a D100 and it's saying, if you get under 49, uh, 59%, then you will then you will make this breakthrough. So we can actually, we can actually take this down now. We can equalize the allocation and uh, we're still gonna be getting, and just let's just update that. So we're going to now be getting 32. So every turn we, we're going to be getting a 32 and increasing um, percentage chance to get improved terraforming. So let's just do that because now we get it's more efficient for us to research like this. <clears throat> I'm just going to drop that down and I'm going to add a little bit more into research points because we've uh, we've got 90 population and 185 factories. So actually five of our factories are being wasted now. So I think I'm just going to reduce the amount of um, spending that we've got on our into industry as soon as this planet is colonized we're instantly going to start throwing population at it to try and get it up on to get it up and running as quickly as possible so we still didn't get that tech but if you see now we're up to 45 percent chance every turn 
and a colony ship has arrived at Sato. So yes, let's build this colony. There goes a little chicken man. One small step for mankind. I mean chicken kind. Okay, Sato. And here we go. Alkari scientists achieve a planetary breakthrough. A planetology breakthrough. So we've got improved terraforming plus 10. Increases the population capacity of planets by 10 million for a cost of 5 billion credits per million. It gives you the option now if you want to start immediately putting money into terraforming. And I don't want to do that. I like to do that manually. And uh, it's asking us to select the next planetary technology. So we get the option of Control Baron. That's no good to us. Improved terraforming plus 20 is uh, is the next level up from the one we've just received. Uh, we've just discovered. This is exceptionally useful. However, I'm going to go for Control Dead because whilst it's more research points, uh, we have got some dead planets next to us and it's going to be essential for us to actually research those. So you'll see now in the planetology, uh, we've this is the first tier of um, of the research in planetology. This is tier two, so we've moved up to tier two now, and um, we've not researched anything in tier two, but we've got access to to some of the tier two techs. If we do have a quick look round, we can see what we want to aim for next, and I think it's going to be good to go for improved industrial tech nine. We're putting 25 in each turn, so that means it's going to be about eight turns until we get this. So it might be worth actually rushing this one. Uh, you don't want to spend too many turns with um, no research points at all going into any fields because uh, I, I think that Remnants of the Precursors is very similar to Master of Orion. It's the same as Master of Orion. And in Masters of Orion, if you didn't put any research points into a field after it was part research there's actually a decay every turn of about 10 percent of the research points that you've put in so it's really important to leave a little bit in there but let's re i'm going to rush improved industrial tech because it this will be a big boost to our economy because it will make all those ships uh, all those factories so much cheaper okay so now we have sato you'll notice that we've only got two population because that's all our transports brought over with them and we need to immediately start sending population from these two planets, from Altair and from Endo. Now, Endo, I can put, I can, I can actually send twenty over from here without really affecting my production too badly. So let's immediately send 20, 20 transports. And from Altair, we can send uh, well ninety two, which is one eighty four. Yeah, so. We're actually out. We 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 don't want to send too many from Altair, but it will be good to send some. The quicker we can get Sato off the off uh, off to a good start, the better. So there we go. Now we just have to readjust our ecology sliders here. I think yeah, we're just going to leave these guys on uh, producing producing factories, whereas. Uh, Altair probably wants to be building tech still. We don't really want to be putting much into... Yeah, I mean, they can only have 100, 220 factories anyway. Um, we can actually start terraforming now, but we haven't actually hit our population limit. So I'm going to leave that for the time being. I'm going to put some more into tech. I think it's important we get some more research. We can also send our scouts out now because we've actually extended the range with, within which we can we can explore so let's go and explore some of these planets that are closer to us and it might be wise for us to build a couple of scouts so let's let's just put a little bit of spending at endo into uh into a scout or two let's build two scouts and we've met the humans we are the talons of earth Spire King, and we're very excited to make contact with you. If you don't need anything of the Triumvirate, anything at all, please don't hesitate to ask. Okay. So we've now met another faction. We've built two scouts. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust the sliders back to remove that spending in. We don't want any more scouts now. That's that's enough. Two is enough. So we're going to send one there, and we're going to send one. Oops. I'm being a bit too hasty. Let's just undeploy this fleet. Uh, 
Just bear with me. Ah. I'm not sure if that is a bug that I found. There we go. Okay, so we've under, undeployed the fleet. I'm just going to send one of them down here. I'm going to send this other one to this blue star here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we found that the, uh, the AVREI, whatever they're called, have actually colonized these now. Let's hope not, because this will make this game pretty interesting. Okay, so the, these, this Telen fleet, the, uh, this is a human race, so they're called the Telens. They've appeared on Altair. So I don't know where they've come from. I think maybe they've come from here. Yeah, that seems that seems feasible to me. Okay, I'm going to end this turn and then we're going to end the video. So uh, because we, we've we've hit that half an hour point. So um, yeah, let's end this here and then when we come back to the game in the next episode, we're going to start looking at what what our options are with regards to expansion. So we're gonna we're gonna have a word with the humans, and um, let's see whether they're friendly or not, and whether they're likely to attack. And then we're going to start thinking about about uh, rapidly building up our production so that we can get these three planets uh, producing what we need in order to defend ourselves. Because the non-aggression pact that we have with these guys, well, that's only as good as our defenses. If we if we allow ourselves to look weak, then those Alkari will go for us. Okay, guys, that's the end of the episode. Thanks for watching. Take care.